praise the Lord. Stand with me if you would. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands and our voices to Him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you this morning, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you today, Father. Thank you for this beautiful time of fellowship. For your beautiful presence today, Lord. We want to thank you today, Jesus. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. Bless your spirit today, God. Bless with your spirit today, Lord. In Jesus. You're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Go with me to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's ask God's anointing upon this service, upon our Sunday school, upon our teachers, and uh, just and, uh, the ones that are here. And if God would just move today in a special way, fill someone with the Holy Ghost. You know, people can get the Holy Ghost during Sunday school. I'm going to get the Holy Ghost down to Millington Church. Back years ago when Sister Simpson was passed with that, I've known them to get the Holy Ghost when they were taking up an offering. Now, brother, you got to really be hungry to get the Holy Ghost doing an offering. But I, I saw it happen. We were there. And you can get the Holy Ghost doing Sunday school. You don't have to wait. God has the Holy Ghost for every individual. Praise the Bible says He gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey Him. All this requires is some obedience. Let's lift our hands to the Lord and ask His anointing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that you would anoint our teachers today. God, anoint these singers, Lord. God, anoint every part of this service, your word, Lord, that we know is anointed. God, bless Sister Creasy to teach to us the word of God. Hallelujah. We praise you today, Lord. Now lift your hands and thank the Lord today. Glory to the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Sunday school can be dismissed. I can get the ushers to come here. They can use your hands here, ushers. And don't class may be seated if you'd like. Brother Michael, would you ask the Lord to bless the Sunday school offering, please? Amen. God bless you, Sister Creasy. Come right on and take charge of the lesson and teach the Word of God today. Praise the Lord, everyone. God is so good. His mercy is everlasting. So thankful for His goodness and His mercy. And the psalmist writer said, Oh, that men would praise Him for His goodness and His mercy. And I want to declare to you today, it's His goodness and His mercy that's brought me here today. Amen? Amen. If it were not for His mercy and His goodness, Brother Jim, I, I wouldn't be here. But He's a good God, and He's a merciful God, and He's shown that goodness and mercy in my life, and I appreciate it today. I'm thankful for uh, each and every one that's here, thankful for the blessings of the Lord, and uh, just glad to be a part of this Sunday School class today. And with that said, Brother... Brother Chris, would you stand and offer a blessing upon the lesson today, please? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chris. Uh, our lesson today is, uh, we're on lesson four, or week four. I think that's the way they choose to show it in our lesson uh, book. We're talking about the benefits of Christian living. And last Sunday, Brother Mark taught on pure love. And this Sunday, we're going to be talking about joy. And, uh, you know, every, every individual has been promised joy, uh, our focused thought says, in his relationship with the Lord. And righteousness, peace, and joy come with the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And that's where we're, we're focusing on today, uh, the benefit of receiving uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that joy. And, and you know, that joy that we're talking about today, it's that, it's that inner feeling that brings contentment, it gives us peace and hope in our lives. And, and you know, we need to understand today, joy is different from happiness. You see, uh, 
we can have the joy of, of the Lord in our hearts, even in times when, Brother Jim, everything's not going the way we'd like for it to go, but we still have that joy. Uh, but happiness uh, is different in the fact that uh, it can be short-lived and, and, and it, can, it can change when circumstances change. You know, uh, one of the one of the children that I keep. Some days he wakes up, he is in a happy mood, and some days he wakes up. I say, "Okay, we're not having that attitude today." <laughs> it just depends on how he wakes up in the morning time. As soon as he walks down the hallway, whatever comes out of his mouth, I know what kind of day we're gonna have. <laughs> just because. <laughs> And so that, you know, that happiness sometimes is there. And if he ain't feeling too good, he ain't so happy. He's not a happy camper. But we're talking about joy, you know, true joy that comes by and through the presence of the Lord. And, and our, our uh, focus verse, which I'm, I'm getting a little out of, out of whatever here, Brother Joseph, but you know that I jump around. So. But our focus verse is Romans 14 and 17 that says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so uh, we know that, that the presence of the Lord is what brings that true joy. Psalm 16 and 11, now I'm back on track, uh, says, Thou will show me the path of life in thy presence, in thy presence, in the presence of the Lord. There is fullness of joy at thy right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. And I have asked Brother Mark to give just a, a, just a snippet of a testimony of the joy that came into his life when he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let's give the Lord and Brother Mark a, a hand of appreciation. I said, Brother Mark, I asked you because you're a preacher and I knew you wouldn't say no. <laughs> well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Creasy, for the opportunity. February the 13th, 2011, my life was in a mess. And I had made some decisions and ultimately tried to do things and sort out the problems that I had with my own hands and do it my own way. And you know, I'd sit in this church for years and I had heard the man of God in my life speak about how that the Holy Spirit will change your circumstances. He'll change your life. He'll fill you with His Spirit. And I understood that from an intellectual perspective. I believed that at this point in my life, but I still had not experienced this experience that he had preached about. And Brother Creasy's mentioned it before because I mentioned it to him and to you all before, but I was in that balcony running the camera, and I took my wallet out, and I took my phone, and I just put everything there, and I said, Lord, if this is real, tonight is going to be the night. Yes. With that particular occasion... Pastor had asked all the ministers to line up and we'd all walk around. They'd pray for us. He did that occasionally then. And we came. And everyone laid hands on me, prayed for me. And then I got to Sister Creasy. And I was doubting at this time. I thought, Lord, I'm not going to do this. I can't. I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. I'm afraid. What may happen? I don't want to do it. And Sister Creasy laid hands on me and she said, just in the power of the Holy Spirit, you could tell she was touched. And she said, God's got something special for you. Now, I'd been up in that balcony, and I'd already made up my mind, but between there and here, I was second-guessing my decision. And when she said that, I sat on this pew here, and Pastor Creasy came over, and I said, I'd like to be baptized in Jesus' name. Because I knew that the infilling of the Holy Ghost was something only God could provide, but that water baptism was my first works. If I believed like I said I believed, then I needed to be baptized in Jesus' name. And he said, do you want to do that now or when something, everyone's gone? He could tell I was timid, I was shy, I was bashful. I didn't want, you know, all the attention. And I said, no, we can go ahead and do it now if that's okay. Or if you'd rather everybody leave, we can do that. I didn't want to hold anybody up. I didn't want to inconvenience anybody. That was what was in my mind. And, you know, he brought me up and everyone stayed. And he baptized me in Jesus' name. And as I came up out of the water, they prayed for me and God blessed me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you, all the timidness, all the shy, all that old man, all those problems, all those circumstances, the best way I know how to describe the joy that I felt 
was that when I was so worried and concerned about everybody else, it was like I was in a room all alone and me and Jesus just embraced for the first time and I felt real power and I felt real love and I felt the greatest feeling and expression of that love I had ever experienced. I have never forgotten the date. I've never forgotten the time, the circumstances or the conversations because God transformed and changed my life. So when I look at happiness, there's lots of happiness. Even the world can experience happiness. To me, it's always temporary. It just happens for a moment and then it fleets away. And it's usually self-focused. It's something that makes me feel good. It's something that makes me happy. That's happiness. But joy is something completely different. It was the gift of God. And I look at it this way. Happiness is an experience, but joy is a lifestyle. Joy is being able to look into the face of disease or illness, look into the face of hurt and problem and circumstances, and still say that I will not lose what God has given me. Because I remember that first experience. I remember those subsequent experiences with God, and I live from experience to experience, not with men, but with my God. That to me is joy. The work of the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5, calls it one of the fruits of the Spirit. You have this joy that cannot go away. Happiness is given by the world, but joy is given by God. And so I hope I've done something here today to spark your faith, just to let you know that no matter your circumstances, and I could testify of the messes and the problems I had gotten myself involved in, but I just want you to know that as soon as God filled me with His Spirit and my life and my whole uh, disposition changed, I noticed that everything that was wrong, God started working on it. The family came back together. The job situation worked itself out. And I just want you to know that if you have never experienced that joy, God has promised that you can have that same experience and you can be filled with His Spirit. Give the Lord a hand clap. God bless you all. Somebody said, that's what I'm talking about today. Amen. Amen. A life-changing experience. Something, hallelujah, that the world didn't give you and the world can't take it away. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Ghost baptizer. John said, I am being baptized you with water unto repentance. But there's one coming after me who's mightier than I. I'm not even worthy to bend down and unloose his shoes, so to speak. Oh, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So we are we're talking about the benefits, and I, I want to tell you something. Uh, you ask me how I'm doing, and most of the time my response is blessed, Amen. blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I just feel blessed because I know the life giver. I know the one that blesses. Hallelujah. He lives. He abides within. Circumstances don't always, amen, please us in the flesh. But we've always got the comforter abiding within us. And we have the benefit, amen, as a Christian of having that joy inside of us. And I'm so thankful. The word of the Lord as we look today. Uh, the Apostle Peter described this uh, abiding joy in this manner in 1 Peter 1 and 8. He said, whom having not seen, you love. You know, we've never seen the, I've never seen the Lord, but I love him today. Amen. He said, you love in whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice. How? With joy unspeakable and full of glory. Right. Full of glory. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you can you can tell somebody about something good, but until they taste it for themselves, all they're going on is what you tell them. But the Bible said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> oh, taste and see. What Brother Mark just did, he gave a testimony. His testimony. Hallelujah. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses of me. Acts 1 8 tells us, and that's what we just heard, what the power of the Holy Ghost did in his life. But I want to tell you that same Holy Ghost in feeling is here today for you, but you've got to be the one that tastes and see that the Lord is good. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. We just got to get an appetite. 
for what's good. Yes, amen. I said we need an appetite for what's good. But brother, brother uh, Michael was telling me they're having a banana pudding uh, oh, yes. a contest up above here in October. He said, Sister Creasy, I want you to make me one of your banana puddings. I want to win first place. <laughs> He said, you pay $5 and you get so many samples of banana pudding. And you know what? You can, you know, you can tell, man, that is the best banana pudding I ever ate in my life. But until you taste it, you don't know it for yourself. The Lord wants you to know this for yourself. If you've never tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. So the prophets of old, they were able to encounter the presence of the Lord. But folks, we've got the wonderful privilege of not just encountering the Lord, but we have Him abiding and living inside of us. We have His holy presence because we've been filled, amen, with His Holy Spirit when we were born again. And that's why we can sing the song that says, I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Hallelujah. And you know, it, 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 it's not just for the preacher and his family. It's not just for the pre the 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 the, the deacon. It's, it's for whosoever will. It's it's not just for an elect few. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Hallelujah. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So today in the Word of God, we find our lesson starts off, amen, in John 16, 21 through 24. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow. We're talking about... We're talking about the birthing of a child because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you. Amen. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I send you whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Then he said, ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be full. And I want to encourage us today, uh, those that need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, amen, you can have it. Uh, and you can have this joy that we're talking about, that benefit of a Christian life, uh, and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen, all we got to do uh, is obey what thus saith the word of the Lord, uh, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Galatians 8, uh, excuse me, Galatians 5, 22 through 26. This is what Brother Mark was referencing a while ago, the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, and there's nine uh, characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit, first of all, is love. He talked about that last Sunday. Today we're talking about joy. Amen. Then next Sunday we're going to be talking about peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. There's something about the Spirit of the Lord, it does not misbehave itself. Amen. As children of God, we need to manifest and we will manifest that fruit of the Spirit. And so we're looking today at the source of our joy, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of God is the source of true and lasting joy. And when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we receive that everlasting joy. You know, sometimes we just gotta let go and let God have his way. You know, as Brother Mark was talking about how the enemy tried to discourage him from the time he left the, uh, upstairs till he got down here. And even while he was down here, the enemy was still trying to discourage him. Well, you see, that's the work the enemy is, is good at doing. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. We just gotta be willing to step out and allow God's spirit to work in us and through us and do what he wants to do. Amen. Amen. So we've got to, we've got to, we've got to walk in the spirit. 
Hallelujah. And sometimes uh, we have to just say no to this flesh and yes to the Spirit of the Lord. And so uh, Romans 15 and 13 says, uh, Now the God of hope fill you. Everybody say fill you. Fill you. With all joy. Everybody say all joy. All joy. And peace in believing yes. that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You know, uh, we, we talked about, I think last Sunday, uh, not last Sunday, but one Sunday we was talking about the glass. Amen. If we had a glass of water, if it's filled to the top and there's no more room for any more water, then if there's no more room for any more water, there's no more room for anything else. And that's what we got to be as Christians. We got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes we just have to go back again. Amen. And pray through. Amen. You say, Sister Chrissy, do you think that's important? I know it's important because sometimes we allow this flesh too much control and we walk too much in the carnal mind and the carnal attitudes and sometimes we just need to get back down again and say Lord I needed your touch I need a second touch I need a blessing again I need to be filled again because this old flesh has got too much a hold and this flesh needs to be put down and I need to allow the spirit of God to work through me amen and do what he wants to do that I can have that joy amen of the Lord weeping may endure for a night but joy in the morning. Hallelujah. We as God's people ought to be the most joyful people in the world. Amen. 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 You say, well, some days I'm not so joyful. Well, it's not the Lord's fault. Every time I get up here, I tell off on myself. I tell off on myself. I was tired Friday. I mean, I was tired. Six month old, one year old, two year old, three year old. I was tired. And the two and three year old fought like cats and dogs. And I got so tired of seeing them fall, I said, well, just hit him back. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled my hair. I said, well, pull his hair back. I mean, you know, I just quit being the peacemaker. I'm like, let's, let's get this thing over with. <laughs> And, and, and by the time I got home, I wouldn't even want to talk. I didn't want to converse. I didn't want to go to eat. I just wanted to be grump, grumpy and grouchy and lay down and just, you know, just everybody leave me alone. Yeah. Went to dinner, probably didn't say a half a dozen words. That's unusual for a woman. <laughs> what hell? <laughs> Brother Creasy talks in the pulpit. I talk at home. <laughs> he talks to you all. I talk to him. He says I preach to him all the time. Just grouchy. And, and it wasn't nobody's fault but mine. Because I let circumstances yeah. affect how I felt. And if you could have, you know, tested the waters there at our table, it would have been scalding hot with bad attitude. Because I just, I, I just, you know, I don't, woman, a few tables, I thought, good Lord, could she not tone that voice down? I mean, everything was bothering me. I mean, when you go to a restaurant, you're going to hear everybody's conversation. But for some reason, she just seemed like she wanted everybody to hear her conversation. And I thought, and I was just grumpy. And it wasn't nothing but me. It wasn't all them people. It was me. It wasn't the kids. It was me. My attitude. That's what I'm talking about. Allowing God to, you know. But Jim, all I, all I really needed to have done was say, Lord, help me fix this attitude of mine. Come on. Preach. Am I telling off on some of y'all too? Oh, yes. Yes. You mean I ain't the only one? No, you ain't the only one. No, you ain't. Well, that makes me feel a whole lot better. I thought I was the only, the pastor says I was the only dirt bag around here. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just so thankful that we don't have to stay in those frames of mind that we get. We get karma. We get attitudes. But thank God we've got a God that hears our prayer and he knows how to adjust and get us on the right setting again. We just got to let him. And I'm probably going to say that a lot today. We just got to let him. As long as we choose to be grumpy, as long as we, as long as we choose to stay in that frame of mind, we're just going to get worse and worse and worse. But when we choose to change the setting and let God work on our heart and say, God, forgive me and let me get what I need from you, I want that joy overflowing that when people look, they can see the joy of the Lord. Amen. Not so much that they can look at me, but the fact that they can see Christ in us. Amen. That He is magnified, not us. Right. Amen. Hey, that's what we are. We're, we're those 
ambassadors that I'm talking about. I started out yesterday, I was going to Walmart. I didn't look too much better after I went back in, but I started at Walmart yesterday. And the first thing I thought of was, what did I say? I mean, you know, I got up and I was dressed and, I, you know, I hadn't sprayed my hair down it, and I just slicked it back. And I thought, well, let me at least go in and, you know, put a little hairspray up here. Because I done told them folks, you don't need to go to Walmart if you represent the Lord looking like, you know, you just got out of bed. <laughs> I preached myself under conviction. I mean, I was in the, fixing to get in the car, and I, 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 oh, God. And I thought, well, at least I could put on a nicer blouse. You know? I, I'm, talk, I, I'm talking about the Lord will work on us if we let him. we got to let him. We can have that joy bubbling up, but we got to let it. You know, uh, 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 even even a spring that's coming up out of the ground, Brother Joe, it can get blocked where it's not flowing like it used to. I, I read a little thin book. I got it at the library years ago. I'm still, you know, I go to the library every now and then. You know, I just go read books. You know, and it was called The Keeper of the Springs. And, and, and this story told about this little city. They got their water source from up in the mountains there. And they had a man up there that lived up there. He was called the Keeper of the Springs. And it was his job to keep all the the leaves and, and the, the, the rocks and, and debris, every, what would get in that spring, Brother Jim, it was his job to keep it cleaned out. Right. One day they had a city council meeting, and the council said, we don't need to pay that man up there to keep the spring anymore. And it wasn't long until when they went to get their water, it was all dirty, and it wasn't flowing like it used to be. The thing they thought they didn't need, they really needed. Right. People began to get sick because the keeper of the spring was no longer cleaning it out, keeping it fresh and clean. Right. And you know what? We're the keeper of the spring. Right. And we don't keep stuff out of our lives. And when the Spirit of the Lord can flow, after a while, it'll get pretty trash and pretty dirty in there. And after a while, we'll feel spiritually sick. So we gotta keep the we gotta be the keeper of the spring. We gotta keep things out of our lives. So that joy, amen, can bubble up within us, amen. And, and so so th there's many experiences in life that bring us joy, but there's nothing, folks, that can compare to the joy that floods our soul when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, and in Isaiah 12 and 3, we read this word, said, Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Folks, we have the opportunity, we have the benefit, the blessing, amen, when we need uh, that spiritual drink, just like in the natural. The natural man gets thirsty. you got to feed him, uh, amen. We can draw spiritual waters out, Brother Jim, when we need it, uh, amen. It's there for us. We just got to draw it out, uh, amen. If we need something from God, we got to go to our knees. Uh, we got to ask him, and he'll do what he said he'd do. Uh, but, folks, it's up to us. We got to let God do the things uh, that he wants to do in our life. Uh, he won't he won't run, uh, you know, he, he, won't, he won't just uh, say, you're going to do it or else. All right, man. But we got to let him. So the Lord spoke about the spirit flowing in our lives. John 7, 37, in that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said. Now, I want you to know it's important that we believe as the scripture has said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. I'm going to tell you, the flow of the Spirit in our lives is the ultimate source of great joy and refreshment. Amen. You never had a drink until you drink. Amen. From the living well. Amen. That living water. You never had your thirst quenched like the thirst that will be quenched when you say, Jesus, I want you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I want you to wash me. I want you to make me whole. Lord, I want to take on your name, washing my sins away. Hallelujah. And then him filling you with the Holy Ghost. There's never been a refreshing like the refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Somebody said it's better felt than dealt. Come on. Come on. Forgive me for my old-fashioned ways. I, I, believe, I believe Brother Huntley said last night he was old school. And I'm going to tell you, if that's old school, I like it. <laughs> Buddy, I like it. 
<laughs> Do some of us some good to get back in the old school. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Acts 13 and 52, the Bible said, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Now, this morning, Sister Margie couldn't find her keys, and she called me, Sister Chrissy, I need a way to church. And I said, Sister Margie, I ain't ready, but I'll be there by 930. And in the meantime, we're going to pray you find the keys. Well, she didn't find her keys. Only the good Lord knows why she couldn't drive that car today. But I was going to look up something in my, in my Bible, and I didn't get a chance to. But I, I was thinking about the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. I couldn't help but think. Now, now you know, we get all these notes. I got eight pages of notes. And I probably shouldn't think with all these notes. I'll just stay with them. But I, I couldn't help but think about Paul and Silas. Right. Now, you're talking about a situation. They were in prison. Right. Not because they had killed anybody. Not because they had robbed a store. Not because they had mugged somebody. Right. They were in jail because they were preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified and resurrected from the dead. That's why they were in prison. Right. Amen. They went so far as to tell Peter and the apostles uh, one day, they said, just don't preach no more in that name. Yeah. Just don't preach no more in that name. And so because they counted it joy that they could yeah. suffer for the name of the Lord. Right. Here we've got a man by the name of, of Saul of Tarsus who we know him as Paul. Amen. Him and uh, Paul and Silas, they were put in prison. Many stripes were placed upon their back. And the Bible tells us at midnight they prayed and sang praises unto God. Do you suppose they physically felt like praising and singing praises unto God? No. Come on. Their, they, their flesh hurts like yours does. Right. Right. Sister Brenda got a hurt foot back there. That foot hurts. Don't you step on the foot. It's her left one, I think. Don't step on that left foot. It hurt. Yeah. Brother Jim, their backs were hurting. Yes, sir. They, they were bleeding, no doubt. They didn't have anybody say, well, bless your heart, brother. You sure did preach a good message anyhow. Come on. All right. <laughs> I believe one of us said, look at here. Amen. We're in this prison. Right. And, you know, we're bound. And, and I kind of want to think they just begin to think about the good things that the Lord had done in their life. Where he brought them from. Paul had once, Saul of Tarsus had once persecuted this way. And I believe there was something that began to happen in their lives that says, hey, this ain't no time to be sad. This is time to rejoice. Hallelujah. It's time to give praise unto God. Do you think they felt like it physically? No. But I tell you, there was something on the inside of them called the joy of the Lord. I said it was called the joy of the Lord. And they began to praise it and sing praises unto God. I don't know what they sang, Brother Jim, but God knows. And those praises, the Bible said even the prisoners heard them. And all of a sudden, there was a great earth shaking to go on. He'd say, but you're paying me to say it. To tell it to you again. I believe that's how he said it. And, and you know, you know the story. God brought them out with a great and mighty hand. And, and that, that same, woo, hallelujah, I said that same Holy Ghost yeah. is here today. Amen. I'm going to say it again. We just got to let him right. do what he wants to do in our lives. Oh, Lord have mercy. Praise I ain't going to get through this, I know. I, 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 I know. Uh, so joy always accompanies the Spirit because the Lord, everybody say the Lord, the Lord. is the source of true joy. Say that. Is the source of true joy. You see, real joy is a fruit of the Spirit. We've already covered that a while ago so beautifully. Brother Mark did. Hallelujah. And you know, those who are filled with the Holy Ghost not only have the fruit of joy produced in their lives, but they have the promise of answered prayers. We read that while ago, John 16, 24. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be full. You know, there's something about hearing from God. Of course, we know sometimes the Lord says no. That's still an answer to prayer, is it not? 
Sometimes we have to just wait. But sometimes we get that yes. And boy, when that yes comes through. Last Tuesday night, somebody had gotten a, a prayer through for Sister Duke's sister. Right. Somebody touched heaven for that lady. Amen. They they thought they were going in there to remove her lung. But when they got in there, God had already took care of that yeah, situation. Right. <laughs> right. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah, God is a prayer answering God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got a sister in Corinth, Mississippi. Can't walk. But Brother Jim, I know a God that's able to make her to walk again. Amen. I, you know, th there's things I, I can't comprehend. When you get some yeses and some noes in some way, but he's still God. And he's got it all in control, Brother Poston. He knows exactly what's going on, what he's doing, and he knows what's best for me and for you, does he not? Amen. Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Folks, there is nothing that my God can't do. So we have a promise of, of answered prayers and it cultivates that deep sense of abiding joy. Man, oh man, Tuesday night when they gave that testimony, first thing out of my mouth I said, I'd be saying if I was that lady, Lord, what would you have me to do? Come on, come on, man. Praise God. Huh? Yes, man. But God's done great things for all of us. So, so let us be ready to say, Lord, what would you have me to do? You know, there's something about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That brings a peace of mind. It brings not only that joy, but a peace of mind. We're going to talk about that next Sunday, so I better just leave that alone. Uh, but, 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 but God, uh, he, he does answer our prayer. And, and He knows exactly what we need at the time that we need it. 1 John 5, 14, 15 says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according, look at here now, according to His will. That's that's it. That's it right there. Is it my warm side, Sister Chris? All right, y'all. Excuse me, just a minute. I know how to fix it. A lot of things I can't fix. Mainly because I'm a woman. If I was smart as some of you men, I'd fix a whole lot of stuff that needs fixing. Y'all get that? Did y'all y'all catch that? That's not an indictment. That was a compliment. <laughs> I got four sons-in-law, so I'm, I'm not going to be ugly to I mean, I'm a wonderful husband. Okay, so <laughs> I'm just plugging in for everybody today. So if we know, verse 15 says, that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Folks, we just got to get to the place that we're asking according to his will. And, and, and there is joy that we can experience, folks, that comes through even the exhortation of the Word of God. I love it when the man of God preaches to me and I think, oh, that was what I needed. It just, it just stirs up something inside me. Like, God, you care enough about me that you'd send that Word to me? Somebody that no account and good for nothing as I am and you just give me that Word at, at the right moment? Yes, he, he cares that much. First John 1 4 says, And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Whether we're here the preach word of God, folks, or the reading of God's word, or even the teaching of God's word, there's joy that comes as a result of being ministered to by the word of the Lord. And you know, uh, God's word is so powerful. You know, sometimes the very things, and I, and I make, man, I, I didn't get all I needed to say Sunday night out. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, we, we've got a powerful weapon here called the sword of the spirit. Right. And it'll fix whatever's wrong in your life if you will let it. Right. It'll cut away anything that's not good. It'll, it'll trim us up. I could use a little trimming in more than one way. <laughs> joy, our joy affects our emotions. You know, there's something about the joy of the Lord. It, 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 it causes people to get all excited. You know, some people, when they feel the joy of the Lord, they just love to shout. Right. Come on. I notice when I sit up here, I shout more than when I sit back there. Right. Y'all notice that too, don't you? Right. He don't hardly get a good amen out of back there. <laughs> well, <laughs> I 
I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> Y'all never know what I was thinking. I don't think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But but some people they, they, they love to sing when they feel the joy of the Lord. Woo, they just some people they get excited and they just want to yes, jump. <laughs> and some people get excited, they wish they could jump. You know, they just clap their hands. You know, emotions. Joy brings out some emotions in us. Yes, yes, it does. Absolutely. You know, uh, do they still have dipsticks in cars that check the oil? I mean, everything's so technological. Now, I don't know if you push the button and that's how you check your oil. I mean, hey, ours tells us when, it's, when it needs uh, changing. He said, beep that little orange thing. I don't like that thing. Because it pops up there all the time. But, you know, you, you know, you could probably gauge your joy level today just by some of the things that we've been talking about. You need to pull your joy stick out. Oh, my Lord. Hey, we've had some of those cars that when we pulled it out there, we thought, dear God, if we don't get some oil in here, we're going to be walking. Because we, we, we checked the gas and, check, and filled it up with oil. You know that station wagon I told y'all about. But, but we're talking about the joy of the Lord. Folks, this is our strength. This is how we function. This is what keeps us going. And that's what the devil wants to do is steal our joy. Now I'm telling it right. You may not want to hear it, but I'm telling it right. You may not like the messenger, but the message is right. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And our joy level is what he goes after. So, so, and, and, and some of us even dance before the Lord. I remember this like it was yesterday because I've just got this visual in my mind. My sister's teenage daughter, uh, the two of them, I think, were up here visiting from down around Corinth or Mickey, wherever they live. They just, Mickey and Corinth is like South Haven and Memphis. They did back to back, you know. And they were up here visiting with, with Sister Herring and us and, 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 you know, how girls do. We had girls and they were girls and Sister Herring had girls and, so, you know, girls get together and they just, I want to go to Mary's. I want to go to Sarah's, you know. But I remember Hope. She's not living for the Lord today. But, but when I think of somebody dancing in the spirit, she had this long, flowing blonde hair. Beautiful. Long, flowing blonde hair. Yeah, and I remember the spirit of the Lord got on that young lady, Brother, brother Jim. And she wasn't dancing a jig, okay? I mean, I've seen, I've seen people, I think, I think, well, that's pretty professional, you know. <laughs> Well, come on, tell it, tell it. I'm just being honest. But that young lady, as she, as the spirit of the Lord hit her, I, I can't, I can't do it because I spin three times and I'm out of here, you know. <laughs> honest, folks. Yeah. The Lord, the spirit of the Lord was on her, and she spun around and around all down that aisle. We only had a center aisle in that building over there. If you've been over there, you know why. It wasn't room for three, two aisles. But it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. As far as somebody, the Spirit of the Lord, as it, I, I've seen people be filled with the Holy Ghost. But I'm talking about she was just so yielded. And it was just a flow. It wasn't a jerk. It wasn't a jump. It was just a... You had to see it, folks, is all I can say. And, and, the, and, and as that beautiful, long... Glory that was hanging down her little back. She just spinning around and the presence of the Lord was all over her. And I'm telling you, there is nothing, there's no visual Disney can put out. Hallelujah. That can compare to what God does in the lives of his people. That will let him. Does anybody know what I'm even talking about today? Can anybody identify? Am I just up here just talking? If I'm boring you, I'm sorry. But we're talking about the joy of the Lord, what the Spirit of the Lord does for an individual. And, and, I'm just gonna be, I, I'm just gonna be straight up with you. I'm just gonna be as straight up as I can be. Sometimes 
I just don't feel like we as God's people are letting God's spirit work in our life like he wants to do because a lot of people have never seen the manifestation of what I'm talking about here. Amen. When the spirit of the Lord is just totally in control and you're just wiped out in the spirit. Some people say, oh, I couldn't act like that. You don't have to act. The spirit does it. Amen. The spirit responds. Amen. And you just let God have his way. It's not you doing it. It's what the spirit is doing in your life. Speaking foreign language here today. But we, 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 you know, we as God's people, it's got, it's got to flow, brother Jim. And if it ain't there, it can't flow. And we need to let it flow, folks. And if we need to refill it, let's get it done. Let's get our, let's get our joy full in the Lord. Let's let God do what He wants. Hey, folks, I'm just gonna tell you. There is a bomb. There is a healing in the house of the Lord. And I'm telling you, it's time we as God's people let the manifestation of the Spirit of God take control of our lives so that God can do the work. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin. I'll heal their land. Folks, we need healing in our land today. And it comes through the Spirit of the Lord. Of scriptures on let the saints shout for joy that's spiritual and that's scriptural Psalms 139 and 32 and 9 Amen. Psalm 67 and 4 says oh let nations be glad and sing for joy it's biblical we got scripture for singing there was a man by the name of Luther Bridgers he wrote a beautiful <laughs> song that says he keeps me singing and here's what the words were some of that song it says there's within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 that's the next line, sweetest name I know. So, then there's the effects, some people just want to clap for joy. Psalms 47 and 1 says, oh clap your hands all you people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. And then there's that dancing for joy, another emotional expression. For some individuals, their sense of joy becomes so strong that they feel like they have to physically express themselves through a joyful dance. And we all express, we're all different. Hey, we're all different. Right. We're all different. Amen. You may like buttermilk. I don't. I don't. Brother Crazy don't like okra. Okra, I do. Uh -huh. Any way you want. Why are you giving me that? I love it's dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't even notice. I guess I was talking too loud. And, and so, oh, uh, the Lord. The Lord appreciates, folks, sincere worship that is expressed outwardly and even physically. Look at King David. He was blessed. Brother Jim, he was excited when the Ark of the Covenant came back into, coming back to the city of David. And we see how the Bible tells us how that King David danced before the Lord with all of his might as they were bringing the Ark of God back to the city. The Bible said in 2 Samuel 6, 14, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the, sh with the sound of the trumpet. Now some people say, well, you know, all that shouting gets me nervous. Yeah. Folks, you go to the ball game, they shout, and you don't get nervous there. That's a hogwash. That's just a cop out. That's just a bunch of baloney. Cheap baloney, not starling. <laughs> that old cheap rag baloney. God. Ooh. Lord have mercy. We grew up on that stuff. I ought not to be knocking it, should I? Uh -uh. I don't like it then, I don't like it now. Uh uh. Yeah. Would you fry it right? Okay, I guess we didn't fry it right. I said it was all different, didn't I? But look, the same joy. Look 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 at the difference though. Look here, look here. David was excited and danced before the Lord. What did his wife, Michael, or how do you want to say her name, what did she do when she looked out the window? She was, she just, she she just oh, probably thought, oh, he has embarrassed me. Look at him dancing out there. Right. Mm, and boy, she let him have it when he got where she could tell him. Wow. <laughs> he was rejoicing. She was mad about it. You're all different. You did. So, 
As we study the scriptures, we see a, a clear connection between joy and spiritual strength. There's that connection. <clears throat> I'm moving the mouse around all today, and I'm thinking, where's that thing at? I can't see it on that screen. You know what happened? It weren't connected. It couldn't show up on the screen. Dummy me, hadn't plugged it in. I'm looking for that mouse little arrow, you know. Hey, folks. Connected. Connected. <laughs> if we're going to get the joy of the Lord as our strength, we've got to get connected to the joy giver. You'll be looking everywhere for joy. You ain't going to find it until you get on your knees and let the joy giver give you that joy. Get connected. Get plugged in. Psalm 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I'm helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song. I said with my song. Oh, with my song I will praise him. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you it's time that we get up here and do more than just sing out some words. But we need to sing from the depths of our heart. We need to let the joy of the Lord overflow. My Lord. So when we understand that the Lord is our strength, it causes our hearts to experience joy. The more joy that we experience, folks, the more we recognize and value the Lord's strength within us. The proverb writer tells us that a joyful spirit strengthens us physically. Oh, didn't know that, Sister Crazy. Well, let me read it. You've heard it before. It's familiar. Proverbs 17, 22. There it is. A merry heart. Doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. You know, I like that merry heart. I like that, that uh, good stuff. I, 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 don't, I don't like feeling poorly. Folks, I felt poorly last Sunday night, but I'm feeling pretty, pretty good right now. And so, there's examples of joy. And, and I gave a little example while I go with Paul and Silas. How about when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea? They crossed on dry ground. And what did Pharaoh's army do? They got drowned in the same place where the children of Israel had walked through on dry ground. God's, God, God moved for them. And Moses just couldn't contain it. In Exodus 15 and 1, the Bible said, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. Can I just say this? You know, I don't know nothing but old songs. That's all I know because I'm old. I try. I can't even play the new song, so I'm not knocking the new song. It's me that don't know how to do all that stuff. But if we're not careful, spiritually speaking, we'll lose our song. We'll let the enemy convince us. Now, he tries to tell me, you just don't need to try to sing because all you know is that old stuff, and they don't want to hear that old stuff. And I say, well, that's all I know. But folks, when I sing unto the Lord, it's not just words, but there is a feeling of what the words are saying that's telling something that I need and it encourages me. And, and so there's something about singing songs. Whether you can carry a tune in a bucket or not, that's not important. But brother, sister, whomever, don't ever let the devil tell you you can't do it. You can't do this or you can't do that for the Lord anymore. You stand right up and you proclaim, I refuse to quit. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. I'm going to lay hold on eternal life. I'm not going to lose my song. Amen. I may know not but one song, but I'm going to sing it in Jesus' name. I'm going to joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. 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 Some of us is like the little lad that never learned how to sound retreat. When they were calling up people to sound the bugle, the only thing he had time to learn was charge. Amen. And you know the story where the battle got going. Amen. And, and the enemy was overrunning them. And his commander said, sound retreat. He said, sir, I don't know how to sound retreat. Hallelujah. And he said, son, if you don't sound retreat, I'm going to kill you. And so the young lad, the only sound he knew how to make was charge. He gave the sound. Amen. A charge. It put courage down inside the soldiers. And they rejuvenated and went out and won the battle. Amen. The enemy is telling us to retreat. But God is saying, charge. Go forward. Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> Sorry. How about, how about Mary? Mary, when she was told of the revelation that she would conceive by the Holy Ghost and bear a son who would be the Redeemer of the world, Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Folks, we're talking about expressions of joy that brings strength, that brings, amen, courage. You know, Brother Jim, sometimes just speaking a word of encouragement to somebody. Brother Mark, wherever he went, he said it today. He said it today. He said he was discouraged. And then I said, Brother Mark, God's got something special for you. It was just that little, little piece of a sentence. It brought courage. Folks, we don't know what we say, how we say it. That might be the very words that somebody needs to get that courage. Amen. To fight on. Amen. To get that, amen, that moving of the spirit. Amen. Motivating them one more time. Hallelujah. So, we talked about Paul a while ago. I jumped the gun on that, and didn't I? But look at here. When the Holy Ghost was poured out on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached the message of salvation to those who were amazed at what was happening. The Bible said, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And we know the rest of that story. Then Peter said unto them, repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then the Bible said in verse 41, then they that gladly. Everybody say gladly. Amen. Folks, it makes a difference how you receive the word of God. Right. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And look at here, verse 42 said, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. <laughs> And in prayers. And then verse 46 says, And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Doing what? Praise. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Folks, there's a joyful experience among those early disciples. They were there was gladness, and that gladness is translated, amen, to the word extreme joy. And there's something about when you receive that word, it brings some extreme joy. Amen. There's people that know what it's like to experience the drudgery, the deadness, the dullness, the misery of sin. But when Jesus breaks, breaks every chain, amen, and those children do that sign, and it says, out of your belly shall flow real verse. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, you can go from a dead, dried up person that's miserable to an individual that the Spirit of God is dry, flowing in out of your belly. Hallelujah. With joy. With joy. Hallelujah. So, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. 1 Peter 1 and 8 tells us that the joy of believers experience whom having not seen you love and whom though now you see him not yet believing you rejoice how? With joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's something about this hope and joy that we have. Hallelujah. Folks, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say this and I think I said it earlier. The world didn't give it to us and the world can't take it away. What the Lord has put inside of you, I'm telling you the only one that can stop that flow is you. <laughs> so the spirit of the living God empowers us. You shall receive power. Acts 1 and 8 says, after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And I'm quickly going to the, to, to the last little part of this last page. Good teaching there, but we just don't have time. Uh, here's the thing. One of the greatest benefits of living a Christian life is the joy that we receive when we're filled with the Holy Ghost. There's nothing more beautiful than a Holy Ghost filled child of God. Amen. The beauty of the Lord that is upon them. There's nothing more beautiful. Hollywood has nothing to compare to the beauty of the Lord. I'm going to say it again. I said Hollywood has nothing to compare to the beauty of the Lord. There's no comparison. All that stuff is is made up and put on. What God gives comes from in here and it, it, and it radiates outward. Hallelujah. Though there will be situations, folks, that cause us to experience sorrow, we all have that from time to time, 
we can still have joy through the Holy Ghost. Our, our lesson text that was found in John 16, 21, the illustration of the woman in travail, and I read it earlier how a woman, when she's fixing to give birth to a child, there's much pain, uh, much suffering, but as soon as that child is delivered into this world, all of that pain is forgotten. Can I hear a great amen, moms? Amen. 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 Forget all about it. Why? For the joy that's laying right there in your arms. Or the joy that you see someone else holding that baby. Everybody wants to hold that new baby. I don't. I'm like, ooh, they're too fragile. I don't know. You. And so, the joy. The pain is, is forgotten. She remembers no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born to the world. What caused that pain to be forgotten? It was joy. John went on to say that, that there is joy. There is a joy that no one can take from us. John 16 and 22. And you now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy no man taketh from you. So the joy that the Lord gives us, it can't be taken away by any external forces. And as I said a while ago, the only one that can destroy our spiritual joy is ourselves by walking away from our relationship with the Lord. But folks, as long as we continue to abide in Him, He will abide in us. For He is our joy today. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you're thankful for the joy of the Holy Ghost.